All right, folks, it's uh, T-Biz here and... Overlord, uh, Overlord Productions, Darn Tootin. And yeah, Darn Tootin. <laughs> you know, anyways, um, yeah, we just got finished watching or uh, hanging out with the, on Gene Hoagland's stream. On, uh, I don't know if you... Cool on the internet. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He played in a band called Strapping Young Lad, Death, Death Clock, Dark Angel, like a lot of bands. Testament. And, uh, Testament. And he's got a stream on Twitch where you can uh, request, watch him play songs, and uh, and have a chat with him. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun to do. And I like Top being on there. Lombardo from Slayer when he knows about double bass. Yeah, that's really it's really cool. Yeah. Think you learn something every time you go, and you hear something new, and there's a lot of cool people on there. And it's it's a it's a it's a cool like uh, cult, as you would say. But anyway, so we're gonna talk about another cult, and this is. Um, uh, Mythic Legion's cult, <laughs> obviously, if that is a cult, I don't know, it probably is now, I would say so. or, an <laughs> or an epidemic, I don't know, but um, <laughs> what we have here in front of us is most of my, uh, or all of my Motu homages, um, it's the only ones I have, there's three I don't have, and um, technically I'm, four, right, you don't have the purple, yeah, uh, four I don't have, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give the uh, wheel to Overlord, and he's gonna, or he's gonna, he's gonna get this video kicking. All right, so, your boy decided to open his big fat mouth on his Black Knight review. Long story short. <laughs> and basically, the whole deal with the Black Knight is he's the first figure from the Coliseum wave to be reissued, which we're going to also talk about All-Stars a bit because it's mind-boggling to me that one of the most sought-after waves of figures, not just figures, but waves of figures hasn't really been up in the all-stars polls up until like now with the romulus character which i suggest if you want him you better go vote for him because he's probably pushing three four hundred bucks on ebay right now and i guarantee you most of you don't want to pay that yeah that's the figure that's i've voted set. for so yeah moving on from that that's cool i already got one if he makes it in i'll probably get it just because i think the quality is a little better nowadays than it was back then I might just turn my other one into a skeleton or try to flip it or trade it or something. But at any rate, that's fine. You know, I don't care if they re-release something I have that's going for stupid money. Because here's the thing. Probably not going to sell my crap before I die. Which leads me to the Masters of the Universe tribute figures. Because the Horsemen have said that they will not re-release the tribute figures because of their relationship with Mattel, and I understand that to a point. My point is, is with the exception of maybe, I would say the Moss Man guy, if you squint the Hordak guy, and the Trapjaw guy. Do they really look like the Master's characters? I could tell you that the Stinkor guy doesn't really look like a Motu character to me. He looks like a, I mean, yeah, if you have the one head on, it's a skunk, clearly. But if you put the other head on, he's just a goblin with orange armor. Yeah, with orange armor, yeah. It's like, you wouldn't even know that was a Stinkor homage, unless I told you. Celtus, the Skeletor homage. Put the blue skull head on him. He loses all the Skeletor elements. <laughs> the only reason he looks like Skeletor is because he has a yellow skull face. You can have a blue skeleton and people will think it's a blue skeleton and not Skeletor. Same with Adamon. He comes with the Atlas head, which he may have never had a beard, to my understanding. <laughs> so really, he doesn't even... He's even a farther stretch, even with the more Motu-inspired head skull. Basically, what I'm saying is, is a lot of them don't really look like the Motu characters. The Shira one does, actually. I forgot to mention that. The Shira one... You could tell that Shira, the Moss Man one. You could tell it's Moss Man, but a lot of the other ones, especially when you throw the alt head on, they kind of lose the Motu. So while I get the relationship with Mattel thing, I think if Mattel had a problem with it by now, after what eight, seven different homage figures, I think they would have said something. Not to mention. There's this little line of figures from Hasbro called Transformers, and there's a lot of third-party Transformers that look just like the Transformers. They don't stray away and do their own thing. They are 
carbon copies of the Transformer designs from G1 or whatever source material they're pulling from, and they are not made by Hasbro. They're all third-party. Hasbro, a multi-billion dollar company, has not ceased and desisted these guys for doing it. So with that in mind, I don't think it would hurt to, at the very least, reissue the first three Motu homage figures. And now I'm going to throw it over to T-Biz to see what he thinks about that. I would love to see that happen, but um, I guess the one thing is, is that you got all the, the fans that have been around, like mo like most of us. Uh, since the first Kickstarter. Yeah, since the first Kickstarter and, and, and a little bit after that, that, uh, that probably feel like, oh, it's going to devalue the figure that I have and it's not going to be worth anything and I can't, you know, whatever. This and that, and um, yeah. It, it's the argument we throw out the window because that doesn't matter to us. <laughs> what matters to us is what the horsemen think about it, because ultimately they're the ones who are going to deliver or not deliver, in this case, the product that we will give them our hard-earned cash for. Yeah, that, that's that, the, that's yeah. The, that's their call, and but plus these figures are kind of a cash cow, I would think. I don't know what their numbers are for uh, how these do what what their what their sales numbers are for Motu homages and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, because that would be interesting to know, you know. Based off of what I've heard compared to the production of the first wave that had Umkin in it, mm -hmm. remember, and then the Coliseum wave, which had the other two in it, the Krona you just bought, I think they made more of him than the other three we can't afford combined. Yeah. Because that's how much this community has grown over the past few years. And that's the other thing. There is a very minor amount of Mythic Legions collectors and fans that have those first three Motu homages, as opposed to guys like me and T-Biz who got in on it around the advent of Decay days, which is when they released their second super massive wave. The community grew like double then. It's, it's, it's been growing been every year more and more, yeah. Even more so now. So yeah. really, the it's like every one out of like 20 people might have those first three figures. That's a very small number. So while I can understand the Horsemen's deal with Mattel and all, they should at least be considering maybe a 2.0 variant of the Motu homages because I fully admitted that I don't really care how I get a character in this line, like Gorgo, Aetherblade, and Attila Leonis here, they did them again, gave them their own unique parts. I think they're better this way. I don't need the first ones because I have the superior versions now. They've also done it with Baron Voliger and Artemis Silvercore. They've given them 2.0 variants, and to be honest with you, I think they're better than the first ones. More personality, with the exception of the Artemis one, because that one's... A little bit more dulled down compared to her first version that had the kind of folded out fairy wings and everything. But the Baron Bolliger, it's a lot more unique than the one t and I currently have, which is really just a Black Knight. Yeah. So while I get that they don't want to re-release the same figure, I would hope that they're considering to re-release the same character with some different parts. Just to make it different so it's not the same thing again. That way it doesn't, quote-unquote, tarnish the reputation with Mattel, which I don't think it would anyways, but me and Tebas have no room to talk with that because we don't know how all that stuff works. Yeah, it's very true. But at the end of the day, this goes with every action figure line. There are people that do not want stuff reissued because it affects the value of their collection, which I can understand to a point. But at the end of the day, I guarantee you 99.98% of y'all are not going to sell your collections before you die. You're just going to hoard it until you finally croak, and then your stuff's going to be in the garage sale for 25 cents a piece. Sorry, not sorry. That's yeah. how it works. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the upside for uh, you know Mythic Legions. That they're a good investment. You can flip them. You can make some money and stuff. But now, now that I'm about to be 46 years old pretty soon... I don't really care for that. I just collect because it's fun and it's what I like. It's a good distraction from the chaos of the world. And if I die tomorrow, it's all just useless junk, you know, to somebody else. I mean, to me, it's something cool. It's something, 
it's inspiring. It's something that's a little distracting, you know, like I said, you know, but, uh, at the same time, it's like, um, if I go, it doesn't really matter, you know, and I'm not, I'm not looking at these figures every day being like, you know, like it's the Maltese Falcon or what is it? Um, or like the, the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail or something, or like the, um, Hope Diamond or whatever, you know, something like that or whatever, dude. Just like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't look at these like that. I don't collect like that anymore. I used yeah, to. I'm not holy relics from an Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> yeah, when I was younger, I would collect things and be like, ooh, this has got to be on card, or ooh, this is that, or this is that, or it's whatever, you know. And I outgrew that. I really don't care for that now. It's not a big deal. I mean, I've had years to think about it, and then I'm just like. Dude, I'd just rather enjoy my stuff than have it hanging in a box in a tote on a card on a wall or this or that. And that's just me. That's my opinion. That's how I, that's how I rock with my toys. Perfect example of this. Teach like their own. A really recent example is I opened my Super 7 Reaction King Diamond, the first one, which I guess is kind of worth a chunk of change now. Mm -hmm. I opened it without a second thought because it's King Diamond figure. And I like King Diamond. And King Diamond's awesome. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care about the value of it. Indeed. And another I thing, too. Because I like the artwork. From yeah. Rep. And with Mythic Legions, man, you kind of got to open them up because they just look cool standing there. The Four Horsemen have done such a great job with these that just this group that we have here, just standing here, is just awesome. They can just be standing, these not doing figures anything. Figures only are enhanced with posing. They don't need to be posed. Man. Yeah. They're just enhanced after you pose them. So that should say something right there, but... Indeed. Moving on from the Motu homage aspect to the recent All-Stars 5.0 poll, because uh, me and Tiba's have already placed in our votes. I'm a bit of a cheater, because I have two emails, and I'm not going to pick my favorite two skeletons I want. Uh, suck on that. <laughs> um, I'm going to let Tiba's go first, and let him express his thoughts on the choices. For the All-Stars poll? Well, I'm kind of confused because I totally uh, screwed up my vote. I was supposed to be voting for heads, and then I thought I was voting for characters, and then I didn't understand that because I just I went in blindly and just started clicking in, just in and out or whatever, and yeah, that was pretty dumb. I think there's a couple people or a few people that might have done that. Maybe my buddy AJ might have. I'm not sure. I almost did it, but then I you know? saw like the gaps in between like a few you know portraits, and I started reading, and I'm like... Yeah. They're making us pick from categories. First of all, with the exception of the head thing, which needed to be its own category, I voted for, what, the demon head and the gladiator head because I think those would be cool as uh, different colors. I didn't care for the category thing because, to be honest with you, the first and third category, there wasn't really anyone I wanted out of there. It's I mean, yeah, I might have voted for Romulus because, you know, he's expensive now and I want other people to have him and I can always do whatever with mine, but... Other than that, there really isn't a character in there that's going to straight dominate. Yeah, I felt, then, the, I felt the same way a little bit because mostly I wanted to see like more, va you know, more vampires, orc skeletons, stuff like that. You know, there's people, I guess, that would want more, uh, want a dwarf, you know, a chance for a dwarf and stuff like there that. There are too. people who want dwarfs and orcs and really I would think those characters should have been the majority in that poll, even over something like skeletons right now. But skeletons have always maintained height even though their relevancy has kind of been dulled down quite a bit since Advent of Decay. There hasn't been a whole lot of them since then. But a lot of people, when I look at what people are asking for or clamoring for, typically it's orcs and dwarves. Now, I will say it does make sense <clears throat> Excuse me, that the goblins are in there. There are a couple of goblins in there. It's been a hot minute since we got a named goblin, so, you know, that's fine. I get that. But the one that sticks out to me, and there's actually a couple, and the first one is Faustia. Why? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a character where I was like, ah, oh, she's kind of lackluster. Um, I've seen her before, you know, in past waves or cells and stuff, and I, I looked at that character, and I'm like, that's kind of like the character that I'd just kind of be like, if they did like a, whatever, uh, just a BS sale or whatever. Or backstock sale, I'd be like, ah, and she's the only well, one I left, and I wanted to waste money, yeah, I would get her, but it's not like a character that I'm like, I mean, it's cool to have a cleric in your squad, but at the same time or something, but I just, it's not a character I'm like going to kick a door open for, to be honest I with mean, you. I mean, 
the thing not... with her is she does go with a couple of the characters in the Aerithir way, so that's really my best guess as to why she's in there, but I still don't see people being all like, I don't see people knocking over the grandma to get that figure. I just don't. I see them trying to get 1.0 body figures still, which I know they're trying to mix it up now because they've done few All-Stars waves. They've done four All-Stars waves, and there really hasn't been any 2.0 builds other than the She-Ra homage up until now, but when I think of 2.0 figures that people would really want to have, it would probably be someone like Juno the Crusher, or Zarya, or Delphina, or Queen Urxa. I mean, yeah. a good friend of ours spent a chunk of change to get that Orc Queen character. So, you know, I would think those would have been better out. Lucretia, the vampire leader character, as opposed to the knight. Because I don't see a lot of people really clamoring to build vampires right now because that vampire wave hasn't hit yet. Once it does, then it's probably going to be a 180 and people are going to want vampires. But right now, it seems to be orcs and dwarves and maybe elves. I've seen some elves, but there really wasn't a ton of elves in that poll either. There was the dark elf and then the elf ranger, which I think he probably has a good shot of... Uh, kind of smoking the competition because it's a really popular figure and a lot of people buy multiples of him so yeah that that's probably if i had to make any predictions out of who was going to win the two i feel that are a shoo-in are romulus and that elf ranger I, I'm, I'm, I'm i already have an elf ranger so that wasn't you know a thing for me but yeah, Romulus definitely. I definitely voted for Romulus. So, yeah. That that guy, if he doesn't win that first category, I'll be very surprised. If, if not Romulus, second. then I would take Clavius, you know. But Romulus looks pretty cool, so yeah. That second category, though, that's where all the good stuff was. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's calling us. Oh, uh, that's but, Brian. Um, <laughs> I'll have to add him after. But, uh, what is it? That second category, that's where all the good stuff was. That had Clavian, Ilgar, Azar the Yellow Demon, the um, the Fury Clan Orc was in there, which, again, people want Orcs, but I don't know if they want that one specific one. I would think they would want maybe the purple one or one of the green ones. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of green Orcs out there other than the one we just got from that uh, reinforcement sale i would think that would make people want more green orcs but you know we don't know everything unless we're just going to get a cool combo head pack of uh orc heads and you know maybe vampire heads or skulls or something or whatever because and i think the the one dwarf in that poll is in there too king bromden iron jaw i don't know how popular he is he is an older figure i think he has a better shot of getting in there than a foster or something like that but yeah, the, the second category was really the kick in the pants one because since you can only vote for one character per category, anyone I would have voted for was in that second category. The um, the two skeletons and the yellow demon were the three I was set on voting for. But yeah. They basically told me I couldn't do that. I felt like Jack Black from that Tenacious D drive through skit. I wanted to be like, shut up and listen to my order. You don't know what I want. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, I know what I want, and I want 1.0 bodies still because I didn't get in on that first Kickstarter. I got in on the 2.0 phase where they had a bunch of females and stuff. I think, was it the poor guys in there too, which I, I don't see him really. I'm surprised he's in there again, to be honest. But what do, again, what do I know? I don't know if a lot of people want that or not. All I know is I know a lot of people who have a lot of those, so he's not really the rarest of that bunch i would say value wise it's between the two skeletons and the yellow demon as far as secondary market price and the four horsemen have even said they don't base this poll off of uh what's selling for big money on ebay but at the same time what's selling for big money on ebay is clearly what the people want isn't it that's why it's selling for that much that's why it's so far and few between like, I can think of one right now, Rhaegor, from that Coliseum wave. is actually named after a Mythic Legions fan who unfortunately passed away some time ago, but I think that's a cool kind of nod to that 
individual and would be a really cool figure to stick in an all-stars way because it seems like an all-star character named after who's someone who's a pretty stand-up guy in the community but again i don't know how all that works i don't know if that's one of those where it's kind of special they don't want to re-release it or they just haven't gotten around to it yet yeah but that that's pretty much our take on the all-stars poll we uh we placed our votes, you know, for the most part, we're okay with it. Uh, I voted twice because uh, I have two emails for a reason. <laughs> I'm just really curious to see what's going to come out of it. Um, you know, I, I have no idea, so it's going to be, especially because I've voted like an idiot. But um, it's be cool to get a head pack, for sure. And um, I'd like to get... Seems to me like they're going to have that head pack in there, maybe. Two Motu homages again, like they always do. And I'm thinking we're maybe going to see Fisto and Scareglow or Fisto and a Beast Man. I think Fisto's a shoe in but the other character I'm not too sure on. I wonder if that's a nod to Mezco, because Mezco puts out, like, the, the skull packs and stuff like that. You can get skull heads and stuff, like the neon ones that they did recently. And um, I wonder if that's uh, kind of like they're kind of got hip and be like, you know, like, oh, well, dude, we should do that too or something, you know. Well, the whole thing with Mythic Legions is it is a modular line, so to not have, like... And, I mean, you had a Motu Classics head pack back in the day, too, so... What is it? Um, you know how they do the Lego pick-a-brick thing? Yeah. If Four Horsemen was capable of doing something like that, then that would be really cool. But, again, they're a smaller company. They're not Customize your own figure? <laughs> yeah. The Mythic Legion store where you can go in and just grab mishmash parts and walk out with whatever cool character you I mean, got. that would be pretty sweet, even if it was just online. You go in and build your own Chrono or whatever, like about a different version or whatever. Yeah, you could li I could literally build Keltus and just pay someone to paint it. Yeah. <laughs> like even if it's just a grayscale or a you know a test shot colors, I could just have someone paint it. It'd be just as good as any other Celtus, you know. But unfortunately, they're still a small company as of now, and they're unable to do that. But hopefully, someday they can do something like that. I don't know if they'll put that specific you know child head with a spike helmet and whatnot in there. Yeah, it's wishful thinking that they could someday maybe do that because. People don't make, like, third-party parts, like the neck pegs. A lot of people really need neck pegs, and Four Horsemen isn't, like, remaking neck pegs, and people don't reproduce neck pegs because they don't want... That, that's not cool, you know? That's kind of lame yeah. to do that, in a way. But at the same time, it's a needed piece, so somebody... I'm saying, really, Four Horsemen should be, like, uh, that seems like a good idea to have like neck pegs available, even if they are just unpainted. I mean, there's a lot of talented people who can paint in the Legion's community. Yeah, and there's paint customizers, paint. yeah. You know. So, you know, it's it's a thought, you know, to have like a pick a brick Lego style thing with Legions because it is a modular line, and the head pack is something that's kind of curious to me because what the heck else could they throw in there? Because there's a lot of, I've seen like the head pack teaser. And there's like 8 or 10, 12 different heads in that pack. There's a lot of noggins in one pack. One of them is actually the um, skeleton head that came with Sir Gerard. So if you missed out on Sir Gerard the second time where there was a factory screw up and they threw in that skeleton head, then you have a chance to get it. So, you know, you won't have the Sir Gerard, but you'll have the skeleton head. So if Sir Gerard ever makes it into an All-Stars wave, you can... Pick him up and put that head on him if you really wanted to. That, and if you have certain colors or certain primary colors of certain characters, you can probably um, take some of the heads off of any of these bodies right here and make a, a, you know, a new orc or a different character or a different vampire or elf or something or whatever. The, reason, the whole reason I voted for the demon head is I'd like to see it in red because I pre-ordered the red Krampus. And I could just have, like, a red demon guy with my Mythic Legions instead of another Krampus, because I have the black one, and I'm yeah, okay with that. that would be cool. But, you know, just a thought. Yeah, that's that's kind of all we had to say, isn't it? Pretty so much, man. Yeah, good. that's pretty much it. So go ahead, man, and plug, plug what you got to plug, dude. Uh, Overlord Productions. I put up a video of the Black Knight today. I got some uh, more Mythic Legions coming in the next couple of weeks. 
I'm uh, going to start posting videos on the DC Multiverse Frost King Wave. And i got to say, very happy with the Todd Father. The QC has stepped up since uh, two stinky butthole King Shazam figures. Uh, this Black Adam is freaking awesome. It's like my favorite thing right now. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, other than the uh, Throwback Thursday, Flashback Friday thing. You know, we're kind of flip-flopping through Gargoyles and Spawn for Thursday. And then uh, Fridays has pretty much been DC Classics uh, and Periax Wave. So uh, we're going to be wrapping that up in the next couple of weeks as well. But, uh, yeah, some stuff coming to the channel. Some new stuff, some old stuff, all kinds of stuff, as usual. And the link will be in the uh, description, so you can go uh, subscribe. Give brother a subscription. Because God knows he needs it. <laughs> gotta get gotta yeah, get overlord to a thousand by we got we gotta get overlord to a thousand subs man we got it it's just it, it has to be done uh we're, we we got to plug some other stuff too though right uh in the mythic legions community mythic legions cabal over on facebook cabal above all or overall I, i'm sorry i'm a rookie when it comes to that type of stuff i cannot remember the slogan but um Go hit them up. Don't be a, you know, an ass hat, and uh, you should have a really super fun, awesome time. There's a lot of cool people over there. Uh, it's run by a buddy Walter. It's a cool guy. Hit them up, and then uh, they're also on Instagram at Mythic Legions Cabal, and then Mythic Customs. Jeremy Gerard. He is the. He's kind of a spokesperson for Four Horsemen, but he's their. Uh, pretty much head web designer uh, him and chris run the uh, website and the in-stock sales and the pre-orders and all that type of stuff but uh, jeremy has his own channel mythic customs he does mythic conversations every wednesday you know, most every wednesday around 7 30 p.m eastern time he'll give you some tips and tricks on how to uh, customize your figures without breaking the bank so really cool guy Check him out. He's probably streaming as we're recording this. So if you know about him, you're probably watching him as uh, we're doing this. Well, alrighty, folks. Well, thanks for watching. This has been T-Biz and... Overlord, go vote. It actually counts. <laughs> <laughs> Signing out. Laters. Laters.